Wow, this is, uh, this is fantastic. It's great to be back here at OCP. It's been a few years, and uh, I'd say maybe the only thing that's grown faster than, than this show and this event is probably Gen AI. It's incredible to see the number of folks that are here today. Um, I want to start and really focus on the core of OCP and really how we as a community can continue to build the future. And it really starts with one principle, openness. You know, openness has been something that's always been at the core of Intel's DNA. Uh, from the early days of what we built in PC, in server, in cloud infrastructure, and now the work we're doing to enable AI. You know, we've demonstrated this leadership in major breakthroughs like PCI, PCIe, USB, UCIe, and now UEC. And the reason that we've championed these standards is because they help accelerate the adoption, innovation, and development across our ecosystem. In fact, you may not be aware that the leading contributor to the Linux kernel, the leading corporate contributor, is Intel. And in line with that commitment to openness, we recently donated one API to the Linux Foundation. And in April of this year, we formed the Open Platform for Enterprise AI to accelerate the development of new enterprise Gen AI solutions with a broad range of ecosystem partners. And in doing all of this, we're giving the ecosystem the trust and confidence of building on an open platform. And ultimately, that's critical because when we think about this ecosystem, software today is developed and runs largely on x86. From the edge to PC, laptop, the data center, whether it's the most complex workloads, HPC, database workloads, web services, and core enterprise applications, whether they're on-premises or in the cloud, they're running on, an X80, on x86 today, and we're seeing similar adoption of x86 as the CPU of choice for AI frameworks. Why? Because the x86 architecture provides software compatibility and ensures your investments are both future-proofed while being backward compatible. And here's the reality. It's no longer just about compatibility. It's now about energy efficiency. And energy efficiency is now at the top of everyone's priority list. You heard that a little bit from some of the speakers earlier. In fact, AI is creating an unquenchable demand for energy. Research shows that data center energy consumption is going to double at least in the next four years. And here's the catch. We can't make a world, the world a better place with AI if we don't make the world a greener place powered by AI. And that's a critical priority for our investments in the ecosystem here at Intel. In fact, our own AI accelerator has, has demonstrated the potential for new levels of efficiency. A, a partner of ours, Naver, Na the Naver Cloud team working with one of their partners, Squeezebits, has recently demonstrated optimizations on Gaudi 2, our prior generation platform, that give them nearly equivalent power efficiency to NVIDIA's current H100 platform for inferencing workloads. And we recognize that that's an important step, but it's not just about the GPU. It's also about the CPU. The CPUs are continuing to play a critical role in these systems, and they play a critical role when it comes to energy efficiency. And I would tell you that at Intel, this is something in the past that we've probably overlooked. We've emphasized performance and not always efficiency. But we now recognize and see it as a top priority. And you can see that in what we've, what we've done and recently released and launched in our PC line. Our latest generation Intel Core Ultra processors, powered by x86, prove that not only can we deliver market-leading power and market-leading perf, we can also deliver market-leading efficiency. This was a unique opportunity where we captured data on the same PC, the same OEM, and the same chassis 
And so we were able to comp compare the two CPUs side by side, the Intel, the Intel x86-based CPU and a Qualcomm ARM CPU. And in both cases, what we see is the x86 processor is extremely competitive in power efficiency. While it's a little behind on Teams, and I don't know about you, but I don't like to spend 11 hours or 12 hours on, T on Microsoft Teams, not that I don't love Microsoft, just need to stand up and walk around every once in a while. Um, but it also exceeds performance and power efficiency on standard office productivity benchmarks. And we're not just doing that in the PC, we're extending that to the CPUs in the data center, particularly with what we've just announced with Intel's Xeon 6 processor family. We've seen massive steps forward in performance and energy efficiency. For example, perf per watt has improved dramatically, 1.9 times better perf per watt than our prior gen when running at a typical 40% CPU utilization. And then it's not, just that, it's not just at those levels, but if you go to the top end with HPC apps, we're seeing two and a half times better performance over prior gen in these compute intensive environments. And finally, while we're focused on performance and perf per watt, we also realize core density is critical. And that's why with what we've recently announced, we now have the highest core count of any x86 or ARM CPU in the market today with 288 cores. We think this is a game changer for compute environments that require high density and overall performance per watt efficiency. So all of this leads us to why we're continuing to see Xeon and x86 as the head node of choice for AI workloads. It's about power, efficiency, compatibility, reliability, and IO bandwidth. When we see clusters being deployed at scale, we see x86 as being the choice for CPU. And the reality is this, is this is built on a foundation of not just a recent level of investment, but over four decades of investment. And you know, we realize that we're also not the only x86 vendor out there. Choice has been a great thing for our ecosystem. But there's some caveats. Today, we have interface inconsistencies. These interface inconsistencies across different x86 vendors cause duplication in software development, duplication in testing, deployment, and maintenance. All of this delays time to value for our, for our ecosystem. And we know that this has been tough for the industry at times. And we want to make it easier and simpler for the entire ecosystem in the AI era to continue to use and benefit from x86. So this may lead you to a question, and maybe you're thinking what I'm thinking. Because what I'm thinking is, wouldn't it be amazing if we could come up with a way to create interface consistency across x86 vendors? You know, I think I can help you with that. Really? Come on up. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Forrest Norad from AMD. Hey, Justin, great to see you. Great to see you, Forrest. And, and Forrest, just to make sure, you, you know that I'm no longer a customer. I'm now a competitor, right? Well, you know, I still count you as a friend. My feelings towards you are complex now. <laughs> you know, I know we tried to make this look impromptu, but actually, AMD and Intel have been talking for quite a while about how we can help ecosystem developers without sacrificing the innovation of the x86 architecture or diminishing competition, but it's an architecture that's near and dear to both of our hearts, and we think that it can get even better for our ecosystem. Uh, exactly, and that's why we're jointly announcing the, the x86, x86 Ecosystem, Ecosystem Advisory Group. Group. Yeah, the advisory group's input, combined with our roadmaps, will unleash exciting innovation up and down the stack. And why does this matter to you? Well, it'll simplify ecosystem software development and maintenance. It'll reduce friction for developers to maximize performance, efficiency, and accelerate innovation. Create an avenue for x86 hardware and software communities, our stakeholders, to request functions and features for the x86 architecture. And it enhances choice of compatible hardware and software 
through a universal x86 interface architecture, starting today with a focus on the future. Exactly. And we're not the only ones that think this is a great idea. Yeah, Forrest, you might, you might recognize a few of these names. There's a couple of our mutual customers up there. Um, and these are not just customers, but you see luminaries, industry titans that have helped us shape generations of this technology alongside us. That's right. Together with our partners, they've helped define the future of our industry, and their collaboration will help us continue to drive innovation forward. And this is just the kickoff of the advisory group. Over time, we expect to grow the number and the diversity of participants. That's right. And we'll meet, define, debate, listen, and then act in the best interests of the X86 ecosystem and the broad community. And speaking of the best interest of, this, of the X86 ecosystem, Forrest, this little friendship won't quench our robust competitive spirit. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so you may have noticed we announced a few things Last week, we announced the next generation of AMD Instinct accelerators, and pertinent to this conversation, the fifth generation of Epic Xeon, uh, sorry, Epic server <laughs> CPUs. <laughs> I like that. I Even like better that. than Xeon. <laughs> well, but, uh, uh, that, that, are, that are just absolutely kick-ass products. But you introduced some stuff recently as well. Yeah, and I, I, you know, we kept our Xeon brand, but we're, uh, we're excited to be back at the game. <laughs> You know, we, we, we're, we're excited with Xeon 6 because we think we're back in the game with a competitive platform on, on performance and power efficiency. And we know that this is going to be beneficial for our ecosystem. That's right. Competition is great for all of our stakeholders for the ecosystem. They're both great machines. Let's let the best products win. Well, Forrest, thanks so much. I can't wait to see what we, what we do collectively Absolutely. together. But I hope what you take away from this is simple. X86 has been the de facto standard in the industry for the last four decades. And it's continuing to win because of the best performance, the best efficiency, and the broadest compatibility with the application and software ecosystem. And we're not stopping there. We're committed to giving you the tools you need to stay competitive in the AI era. You know, x86 has been the ecosystem of choice. And it's not just been the ecosystem of choice in, in the data center but of course across the PC, and we've seen it extend to new edge use cases, to applications and segments in telco, and down into embedded devices. So my call to action, my ask for, you know, of all of you, is continue to lean in with us. Bring us your toughest challenges. Bring us your requ requirements. And don't let old preconceptions about us hold you back. We're here to help you drive innovation. We're, here, com we're committed to taking x86 to new heights. And we're committed to ensuring it's your CPU architecture for the, for the long-term future. Thank you. And Forrest, I'll turn it over to you for your talk. Thanks very much, Justin. All right. Take care. Take care.